Hello everyone, this is Lolly. Today I want to review the Wear Memory Keepers Cinch Disc Punch. Make sure it's disc. If it just says mini, then it is a mini cinch that doesn't punch out the little disc binding holes. In addition, I'm actually going to be comparing it to the Levenger Circa Punch, which is their disc punch system. So let's get this out of the box. I just now cut the tape on both sides. So there you go. You have your little instruction sheet there. There is a little loop here so that you could hold that handle down. I don't know what on earth this is. Look at that. On Look at this on the handle. Let's see if I can clean that up. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to compare some specs first before we go into reading the instructions and seeing how, how this works. I see a little gizmo right there already. Okay, so let's start comparing these two. The We Are Memory Keepers pun, it retails for 99, but you can find it for 77 sometimes like on Amazon. The Levenger Punch retails for $69.50 on their website and on Amazon. So the difference is $7.50, this being the more expensive. The weight, this is two pounds, three ounces. This is three pounds, 15 ounces. So just under four pounds and a difference of one pound, 12 ounces, this being the heavier. And the size, this is seven and a quarter inch by five and seven eighths inch. And then it's six and a half inches tall, but if you hook this like this, then it becomes three and a quarter inches tall, but I do not recommend keeping it closed like that because you will ruin the spring. Um, I did discover that this is just like oil on, on the surface. It wipes off, and also you have to punch a few times on scrap paper to get rid of the oil that's on the inner mechanism, just a heads up. So this one is 12 and 8 inches wide, four, uh, long, 4 inches wide, and 3 and a half inches tall. And it does not have a way to lock it for storage, which you don't want to lock anyway. Cuteness factor, definitely the white and the pink, very cute. This is more utilitarian looking. Construction, this is plastic, so not as durable. This is metal. This is why it weighs so much and very, very sturdy. You could feel that when you pick it up. Waist trap, this has a little waist trap right here that you can pull over, pull off, and pick up your little waist pieces and toss them. This also, this entire tray is like this uh, plastic thing on the bottom, and you can see it's time for me to empty this. The depth of the punch, in other words, when you put your paper in and you punch, how far into the paper is it going to punch? And I want you to see the difference right here on these two. This one is the Levenger. This one is the We Are Memory Keeper. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Now, it might not look that different to you, but this does punch further into the paper. I measured it. This is nine millimeters in from the edge of the paper to the tip of that semicircle. And this is seven millimeters, only a difference of two millimeters. But what difference does it make? That is, if you're using a small punch like I did for these, these are gift cards that I've turned into little notebooks or planners or uh, journals, whatever you want to use them for. But when you use the We Are Memory Keepers punch, it puts it so far into your project that if you're using small discs like this, when you open them, there's not much room here between... Uh, between your left and right papers. There is room, but it's very negligible. And if you make uh, it make this any thicker, you're not going to have much room to turn your pages. Now, what is the longest sheet of paper that you can put into either one of these punches? Well, with this one, you can keep going. I mean, you can fit a 12 inch piece of cardstock in there very easily. It's got 11 of these punches in there, but if you want to continue and do longer than a 12 inch piece of cardstock or paper, you're going to have to figure out how to line it up when you move it over to punch extra holes in. 
but I don't know, would you ever really punch more than a 12 inch piece of paper? It's kind of doubtful. So I don't think that's really an issue. This one also, it, it, it just, whatever you want on this, you can just keep going. Let's say that we've got this punched, push it all the way to the end and punch it. And we want to keep going and going on a long piece of paper. You'll see on the side here, we have this little notch. So all we do is put that down into one of our previous holes, still push the paper all the way in, lift that up and we can just keep going. It lines them all up perfectly. So really you could just keep going. But again, why would you wanna do longer than a 12 inch piece of paper? I mean, maybe you want an 18 inch journal, I don't know. I don't know that there would ever be a time when you need to do longer than 12 inch. The thickness of material that these can punch. Like I said, this is so sturdy and I have done chipboard in it many times and they show on their website using chipboard in this as well. Now, these are chipboard coasters. And if I do this, you notice that this has a line, it says center. So you could either find the center by measuring of your project, or you could lay that on here and look and I see three and a half and three and a half and I see it goes perfectly between those two and see it punches just perfectly. So it did cut it out. The other thing is how easy is it to use it for your planner? On this one, this sliding, you push this down and you can slide this in and out to stop. And this is the guide right here to put your papers in to know what size to punch. However, the sizes are based on their journals, Micro PDA, Circa PDA, 3x5, Compact, Junior, and Letter. These are all their proprietary uh, sizes, whereas this one goes by the standard journal sizes, A4, A5, A6, A7. So let's do another example. Let's say that we want to do an A5. Okay, so I have this paper cut, and this is text weight paper. It's a little thicker than, you know, than cheap printer paper. It's a good quality, like you would want for insert sheets on your planner. And so this is an A5 size, or five and seven eighths by eight and a quarter. We wanna pull this guide out here. And I see the A5 is in the A bracket, which means you put this in the A bracket. This is your little guide on where to start punching. You want your punches here, so you want to turn that side into here. It's more important that you really line it up against the back flat and then slide it into this. So once you do that, you'll want to remove this and put it back in its little storage ca caddy here. And then you see this last punch, you want to line that up with this alignment peg and push that down into the hole. Now, it's still possible for the paper to swivel, so make sure you've got it up against the back. Lift the alignment peg, and there you have it. Now, I want to show you that I see these are not cutting well. Okay. It's leaving parts that it's not cutting out, and that you, I'm going to have to tear those off, so not happy with that. Now, how to do this on here? This is not set up for planner sizes as we know them, but as for Levenger planner sizes. So if you just found the middle of the paper and you lined it up to the middle punch, which there's 11 of these, so it would be this one right here, and there is a little line, a crack right in there so you can see the middle. But the problem is, if I did that, I'm going to end up with one of my holes is gonna be on the very, very edge of the paper. The, the space between these on this machine is not the same as it is here. So what I would do is I would take this and just kind of eyeball it and put it between where I want that. I, I didn't mean to bend the paper. But the problem is now I, I maybe I have my cover, but I want all my pages and every single time I'm going to have to guess where that alignment is because you can't get this set to where you want it specifically. I'm just gonna bend this for the sake of uh, showing you this. That's when I put tape here and I will draw a line right there. So from then on, all I have to do is put this in there and 
up to the line and I can see where to punch. This line is from another project I've been working on. You see, I also fold my tape under so that I can peel it off when I'm done and it won't be permanent. Okay, so that's how you can get all of those uh, lined up for your, for your Levenger project, for your Levenger punch. Now, the other thing you could do instead of tape is you could use vinyl, adhesive vinyl, and you could set all your, um, your constantly used planner pages or whatever, and you could put those al marks along here so that you could use those. So what are my thoughts? These, this is sturdy. This is so well made. It's metal, it's sturdy, and you can't go wrong with it. It is more affordable than this. Yes, it's not as cute, but it's made to last a long time. So I did punch the chipboard on the Levenger as well. So this is on the Wear Memory Keepers, and I want you to see how fuzzy these are. Okay, all fuzzy, and this is on the Levenger. Much more crisp and clean, like it's actually punching the holes. So what I have found is that chipboard and paper come out very fuzzy on the We Are Memory Keepers. But when I started going back and really looking at the cardstock, which I thought was doing better than it is, there were several, you can see they're just folded over, but there's several really fuzzy, unclean cuts with that as well. It does do better on cardstock, but if you're only doing cardstock on there, it severely limits your ability to really create with it. Okay, so the jury is in. I have punched and punched with this, and as I said, the only clean, semi-clean images I've gotten were on cardstock, but you can see here that this one is also quite fuzzy. So um, normally on a regular, just like a heart punch or a circle punch, I have in the past used very, very fine sandpaper. Um, but that, that can dull the blade, so it's kind of like a last resort. I did try some wax paper in here, but so far, right out of the gate, everything I have punched has been very, very fuzzy. So my husband, the engineer, came down and looked at this while I was working, and he said, oh, no, don't even bother using sandpaper. He looked at the holes underneath, and he said that the cutting mechanism doesn't even fit into the hole that it's punching the punching the paper. It's not the same size, and there's a gap between the cutting blade and the hole, and that's why it just pushes the paper instead of actually cutting it. So it's like pushing paper and tearing it, tearing it instead of actually slicing it. So I have to say, I'm sorry we are memory keepers, but this is a thumbs down for me, and I think because of that, I will be contacting the company and just returning this. Whereas this has, like I said, I've had this for years. It is solid. It is actually more affordable. If you don't have to do specific planner sizes, or if you want to, I would do the tape method. Mark that on the tape, and then you could always get your size exactly how you want it. Thank you for watching. And I hope that really gave you some uh, tips and tricks about using this.